بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله سميع الليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أدخلوا في السلم كافة ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We will inshallah ta'ala resume uh, with our tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. And we were discussing the first 15 verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Some of the tafsir which we covered last week was a repetition of what we had covered previously in the past. Just to get... Uh, to do a recap for those who joined us late. But Alhamdulillah, from this week on, we will be continuing from the verse 16. Before we do that, to do a very quick summary of what we covered in the past, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in this surah talks about different things, different issues, and this is known as one of the most powerful surahs in the Quran, one of the most important surahs in the Quran, in the sense that it carries a lot of weight and effect against spiritual problems if one has problems in the family in the sense that if you think you've been afflicted by a bad eye evil eye or you are afflicted by magic or something like that then this surah is one of the most powerful surahs to inshallah undo the effect of magic and jinn in that sense and also this surah talks about different ahkam almost 1000 ahkam are discussed in this surah and there are 1000 one, 1, akhbar news in this surah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning talks about the believers then he talks about the disbelievers gives their qualities who the disbelievers are and then he talks about the hypocrites extensively the munafiqeen or the munafiqun so first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains as to who the believers are the believers are the ones who believe in this book which there is no doubt in this book there is no doubt and these believers are believers because they believe in the unseen they haven't seen the prophet they never saw any revelation coming down on him and yet they believe in him and they haven't seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but by looking at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah will discuss in this surah extensively, they believe in Allah. And also, they are the ones who pray. The believers are. The believers, the mu'minun are the ones who pray. يُقِيمُونَ salat وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they feed the poor. And they also believe in what was revealed to the Prophet wasallam, and what was revealed before the Prophet. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ أُولَٰئِكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ And in the hereafter they believe. So they also believe in the hereafter. They believe in a retribution. They believe in a resurrection. When we will die, we will be resurrected. This life is not in vain. This life has a purpose. And the purpose is to worship Allah and then get risen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be punished or rewarded according to our deeds. And these are the ones upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his guidance. And these are the ones who are successful. And now then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having talked about the believers in this way, in the beginning of the surah he goes on to the disbelievers. That those 
kuffar or disbelievers, whether you warn them or not warn them, it makes no difference to them because they are disbelievers. They don't want to believe and we talked about it extensively. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ غِشَّاوَةً وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And these are the people whose hearts have been sealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their haughtiness, their kibr, their disbelief. And then, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And there are those who say that we believe in Allah and we believe in the last day. But Allah is saying, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ These are not believers. They do not believe. They are only claiming to believe with their tongues. These are the hypocrites. These are the munafiqun. And they are the most dangerous people on the face of the earth. Because of their hypocrisy, because they are cowards, because they are liars. So they have one thing in their heart and another on their tongue. Okay? They don't believe in Allah, but they say from their tongue to be accepted by the believers and the disbelievers. So these are the people who ride two boats at the same time, heading in two different directions. So if you ride two boats heading in two different directions, what happens to you? You get overstretched and you fall and you drown. So these are the disbelievers. In the sense that they are munafiqoon. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ That they mock Allah and the believers, but they do not mock anyone except by themselves. Except themselves, because they are the ones who are deluded. They are suffering from uh, an illusion that they will be successful. They will be able to deceive the believers, showing them their hypocrisy, or showing them that they believe, but they don't really believe, and they think that they are deceiving them successfully. But they're not only deceiving uh, themselves; they're deceiving um, um, they, they, they're deceiving themselves and those who are connected to them, those who are close to them. So these people are deceivers of no one but themselves. And in their heart is a disease, the disease of doubt the disease of disbelief following worshiping their desires okay they have seen the light as we will discuss in due course and they willingly reject the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having accepted it and they are nothing but liars they are liars that when it is said to them do not cause mischief in land they say we are not mischief, mischief makers, we are peacemakers. But they are liars. Allah has already said that these people are liars. They are the ones who are mischief makers. They are the ones who cause disruption to the peace of this world and cause disasters and catastrophes and fasad. Fasad. Fasad is mischief. All kind of catastrophes and disasters on the face of the earth can be rega regarded as fasad. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ when it is said to them, believe the way people have believed. And then they turn around mocking that should we believe the, the way the low ones have believed, the people with lower intellectual capacity? That Allah is saying that these are the ones who are the low ones, the munafiqun. That they run after the temporary glitter and glory of this world and disregard the eternal pleasure. Uh, of the hereafter. These are the ones who are deluded and these are the ones who are the low ones with lower intellect and in, uh, lower intellectual capacity. Because how can you deny Allah by looking at the signs of Allah? Is that wise? Is that something good to do? Does that benefit you? When you look around you, all you see is Allah's signs. And when you see Allah's signs, then you reject them. There is no one more unfortunate than such a person who would reject Allah by having uh, seen His signs. And when they are with the believers, again we are talking about monafics here, hypocrites, those who have one thing inside, in their heart, and another on the tongue or in the face. Okay? They, when they are with the believers, they say, We believe. We are just like you. We are with you. When, you, when they go back to their shayateen, their leaders, then they say to them that we are with you. We are just like you. This is someone who is two-faced, right? 
two faces. Someone who has double standards. Okay? One rule for one people, another for another people. Okay? Or one face for one group of people, another face for another group of people. So these people are not consistent in their behavior. They believe in that phrase, when in Rome, do as Romans do. And we dealt with that last week. We believe, when in Rome, do as Muslims do. <laughs> these are the principles. Our principles, our morality is consistent. So hypocrites will do as Romans do when in Rome. Not the Muslims. Muslims do as Romans do in, when in Rome, okay? And this is what Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmallah, was put through. You know, when he was asked to change his views, even when he was tortured and persecuted, he said, no, I will do as Muslims do. I will do as Qur Quran commands me to do. I will do as the Prophet did. And that's what he did. And that's why ulama of Islam, they believe that Imam Ahmad was one of those people who saved Islam from destruction. Because if he gave in to the pressure, which was inflicted upon him by the Khulafa of Banu Abbas, then we would have been confused today about the Quran, whether it's made, whether it is, it is revealed or it's created. But we know the Quran is the knowledge of Allah and the knowledge of Allah can never be created. Allah's knowledge is eternal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it cannot be created. So the Quran is not created. So these people, when they go to the shayateen, here, here we have to address one point here before we move on to the verse number 16. Shayateen can be from jinns and humans. Okay? So when we use the word shaytan, when we say, A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Okay? That doesn't actually cover the jinns alone. Instead, rather, it also covers those who are shayateen from humans. So you may have humans who are shayateen and some of the human shayateen are, wor are worse than the, the, the jinn shayateen. Iblis was a jinn or is a jinn. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Aba was takbar wa kana min al kafirin, he was the haughty one, the proud one and he became a disbeliever and also in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he is wa kana min al jinn. He is from the jinn and we know him as shaytan. He is the one who's the devil, the Satan, okay? But at the same time, there are Satans from the humans as well. So human beings inspired by Iblis, the Jinn Satan, can also become Shayateen, Satans. Like Iblis has his entourage, his descend descendants, spiritual descendants, okay? He has his own halakha, okay? He has his gatherings, Iblis, where Jinns, they come to him and they tell him about all the jobs they did on, uh, in a, a, any respective day. For example, he has a sitting, there's a hadith on the Prophet Sallallahu He asks his people, what have you achieved today? And they tell him, we caused this destruction, we caused that, caused that destruction, we caused that fight, we caused that zina, we caused that wine factory to come about, we caused uh, uh, President Zardari to come to power. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Something like this. Okay? So we did all of these things. But then he says, oh, you haven't actually achieved anything. Iblis says to his entourage, you haven't actually achieved anything. Then one of them comes forward and he says, I have caused a divorce to take place, a family to break. And then he gets up and he embraces one of the, these people or such a person or whoever has done that from his jannat, from his followers. And he says, you have achieved something. So when you cause a family to break, imagine brothers and sisters, what happens? When a family breaks, the children are fatherless and the woman is husbandless and then there starts the fitna. This is the root of a problem. This is the root of the problem of every single society we have on the face of this earth. Okay, If you go to any country on the face of the earth where you have high crime rate, you will see that most of these people committing these crimes are, were fatherless children or they had disturbed life. Their families were disturbed. They lived a very disturbed life. So only us, the brothers and sisters, Muslims, collectively, we can undo the trap of shaitan. Shaitan, what he does, he comes and breaks families and destroys families that way. And these families, then what happens? These children, they grow up to be disturbed children and they go out and do wrong things in the society because they, they didn't know better. Their background, their beginning, beginning of their life was disturbed so they go out and do these things and this is where destruction starts from 
So we have to take care of these things. These things are very, very important. We should do our utmost best not to break families, not to cause destruction in this way. And this is what Islam stands for. So if all people cater for each other's rights correctly, if Muslim women, they take care of the rights of their husbands properly, correctly, husband will not have a problem. If likewise husband takes care of his wife and gives her due rights to her, then she won't have any problems with her, with the, with her husband. That way we maintain a stable, a peaceful relationship. Okay? But when we start to infringe upon each other's rights, when we start to break each other's backs, when we start to break each other, when we start to get involved in the law, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start having our own opinions and start applying them in our lives, that's when problems start. So when people come together and they say, look, between us is Allah and His Messenger. One criteria. You accept it, we accept it. And there is only one criteria. So we will follow this one criteria and once we do that, we won't have any problems. So you're happy and your wives are happy. And vice versa. Okay? They're happy. Because it's not your say and it's not her say. It is the say of Allah and His Messenger, the divine law. So if Allah exists, then His law exists. And if His law exists, then that law must be obeyed and taken seriously. And the moment you drop that law from your life, you have problems. So your shayateen can also be humans. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them in the Quran, in Surah Al-Nas. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ Those who whisper in the hearts, in the breasts of men, okay, from the jinns and the humans. From the jinns and the humans. So khannas, the whisperers, the shayateen, can be from the humans as well as from the jinns. So when these people, these munafiqeen, when they go to their shayateen, their leaders, Ibn Kathir Rahmullah here, he describes what actually shayateen means here. Shayateen means the leaders of the kuffar, the munafiqun. Okay? For example, some of the Jewish tribes, they were uh, conspiring against the Prophet wasallam to annihilate him, to kill him, and to destroy him. So all of these munafiqun, they had alliances with these. Jewish tribes. So that they would go to the, the leaders and they would say, we have achieved this, we have, we've got this news for you, we've got that news for you, Muhammad did this to you, he did that today, we should do this against him, all of these things. They used to plan together. So when they used to go to the shayateen, the leaders, uh, kufr, the heads of kufr, then they would say to them, we are with you. And when they used to come back to the Muslims, in Masjid the nabawi they used to pray. They used to pray with the Muslims. So you don't know. You don't know a munafik. You don't know a munafik by the looks. You can't look at a munafik and tell whether he's a munafik or not because if he's praying among the Muslims, how do you know who a munafik is? Like we have some munafik on running around in our mosques today. People who have Muslims' name and their names pretending to be Muslims and they're running around in mosques gathering information on innocent brothers. Okay? Working for uh, oppressive powers. So anyone a Muslim, any Muslim who spies on Muslims, because Allah says, Wala ta jassasu in the Quran, do not spy on each other. Okay? Spies on Muslims and harms Muslims wrongfully, wrongfully, he becomes a munafik. He becomes a munafik. He's a munafik. He's a hypocrite who is pretending to be a Muslim and he comes to Muslims. Uh, as their sympathizer and then gets information, gathers information and goes and misrepresents it and then gets people in trouble. Okay? These people are nothing but hypocrite and they are what? These people are, are the ones who have bought misguidance against what? Hidayah against guidance. So they have replaced misguidance with guidance. Deliberately. Who are these people? Allah has given them some time to have fun. Go and have fun and then we will see you in the hereafter. So now the Munafiks, 
Why didn't the Prophet ﷺ deal with them even, even when he knew? But even he, the Prophet ﷺ, didn't know all the munafiks. He only knew the munafiks uh, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed to him. And then Hudayfa bin Jaman radiallahu anhu was one of his uh, people who was told by the Prophet as to who the munafiks are. So when the Prophet ﷺ died, even after his death, even though Hudayfa knew for 100% sure that these people are munafiqun, these are hypocrites, he didn't expose them. So in Islam, we don't call people munafiqun on their face. Okay, we don't assume things, okay, in Islam, until we see clear-cut kufr. We can have signs of nifaq, we can have signs of hypocrisy. For example, Rasulullah in one of the hadith, he stated that a man who has three qualities in him is a munafiq. For example, when he makes a promise, he breaks it. When he takes a trust, he breaks it. And when he argues, he abuses people. Okay? So these are signs of hypocrisy. But we, if we see these signs in someone, we can't say you're a munafiq because effectively you're calling someone a kafir. You're making takfir. So in, unless you have clear-cut evidence from someone that someone has actually exited Islam, has left Islam, you cannot call such a person a munafiq because we know this from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he knew who the munafiqs were but he never killed them or he never exposed them and even people came to him and said why don't you deal with the munafiqs and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? that I don't want people to think that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is killing his own people because these munafiqs they infiltrate Muslims they come within the ranks of the Muslims and they pretend to be Muslims. So if he started killing these people, people would have said in the Arabian Peninsula that Muhammad ﷺ is killing his own people. Look, look what he's doing. He's killing his own people. You want to follow him? So that's why. But Hudayfa, even Hudayfa, he knew who the Munafiqs were. Because the Prophet ﷺ told him that these are the people who are Munafiqun. These are hypocrites. But even after the death of the Prophet Wasallam, he didn't expose them. He kept secrets with him. So Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he came to Hudayfa. Subhanallah, look at the taqwa of these people. Look how unsatisfied they were of their deeds. Their deeds were never enough for them. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, the man about whom the Prophet Wasallam said that I saw, I had a dream. And in my dream, I took a cup of milk and I drank from it. And then another man, Umar, came and he took the remaining, uh, wh whatever was left in the cup, the remaining part of milk, he took it. And the Sahaba, they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what does that mean? The Prophet وسلم, said, that was ilm, knowledge. That was knowledge. So Rasulullah took knowledge from Allah and whatever was left was given to Umar. And there are reports about Umar that if there was a Prophet after the Messenger of Allah, it would have been Umar. But he was so concerned about his Iman and the state of his Iman and they were so scared of doubt, or even a little doubt, he came to Hudayfa and he said, the Prophet ﷺ told you the names of the Munafiqun. Was I one of them? Allahu Akbar. Imagine Umar bin Khattab asking this question from Hudayfa. Hudayfa said, no, you were not one of them and by Allah I will never answer this question again. I will never answer this question again. So Umar, even someone like Umar was worried about his Iman. Who are we? We do little deeds and we start jumping around, showing off. I did this, I did that. I've achieved this, I've achieved that. And this is a big thing. Ria is a big problem. And these big people, big people of big characters in the past, they did so many big things and they never bragged. In fact, they were so unsatisfied with their big deeds. And we are so satisfied with our little deeds. We do little things and we think we have done a lot. We have done so much. We haven't done nothing. So, Hudayfa, he used to go and pray for people, the janaza. But any man Hudayfa wouldn't pray janaza for would be a manafik. So, Umar would follow Hudayfa and see if he's not praying the janaza of a sahabi or someone who was known as a sahabi of the Prophet Wasallam. He wouldn't attend that janaza because he, he would know that this person was a munafik about whom Udayfa was told by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told about few certain people and in the Quran there's a verse where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says you don't know all of them. You don't know all of them. So this itself proves that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have ilm al-ghayb. He didn't have the knowledge of unseen. 
He had the knowledge of whatever Allah revealed to him. And until it was revealed to him, it was unseen for him. Allah says in the Quran, O oh Muhammad, we are revealing these verses on you and you were unaware of them. Your ancestors were unaware of them. So he didn't have the knowledge of unseen. The Messenger of Allah doesn't have the knowledge of unseen. These people, the Munafiks, are the one who have bought misguidance against guidance. And this trade they have done is not going to benefit them. They have left guidance for misguidance. So these people are unfortunate. And there are many, many aqwal, many, many sayings. Uh, from different people, like Ibn Abbas, Ibn Masood, and other Sahaba, that these people have left uh, guidance for misguidance deliberately. And they have left Abdullah uh, bin Masood, radiallahu anhu, or Abdullah bin Abbas, one of them. He stated that they have accepted kufr instead of, instead of what? Guidance. Instead of Islam. Mujahid, rahmullah, one of the students of Abdullah bin Abbas, he stated that these people are the ones who have embraced Islam and left it. So when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, many people, they rushed into Islam because of pressure as well, social pressure as well. Okay? Um, because everyone was embracing Islam sincerely. Some people, they thought they'll be left out. So let's pretend. Let's pretend. So they said the shahada with their tongue. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Simple. Okay, you become a Muslim. But they had to pray. The point is that they had to pray. If they didn't pray, they would have been exposed as kuffar disbelievers. So even imagine Ashabur Rasul radiallahu anhum. In the book of Tirmidhi, we have a report that the Sahaba never considered the abandonment of an action kuffar other than the abandonment of Salah. So if Salah was abandoned, they would consider such a person a kafir. He's not a believer. If a person didn't come to pray at the time of the Salah with the Sahaba and was walking around, roaming around, not praying. Such a person was considered by the Sahaba to be a Kafir if a person abandoned the Salah altogether. And again, the Prophet ﷺ in many, many other reports, Al-Ahdu Bainana wa Bainahum as Salah for Man Hafakat Kafir. Difference between us and them, the covenant between us and them is a Salah, and anyone who abandons a Salah is Kafir. He has made Kufr. Okay, so even the monafics, hypocrites in Medina, who used to pray five times a day. They used to come to the masjid at Fajr time. Fajr time. So imagine the people who don't pray today. What claim do they have to Islam? Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, La hadda fil Islam man taraka salah. The one who abandons salah doesn't have a share in Islam. Doesn't have no share in Islam. Islam doesn't benefit. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Buni al-Islam wa ala khamsin. Shahadati an la ilaha, uh, an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan Rasulullah. Shahada, number one. Islam is based upon five. Number one is shahada. Wa iqam is salah. And uh, establishing the salah. Second pillar of Islam. Then wa ita is zakat. Wa al-hajj. Wa sawmi ramadan. Okay? So even the monafics used to pray. But these people, in their heart, they were وَمَاهُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ They were kuffar. They didn't believe in Allah and His Messenger. Okay? And they bought dalalat. They bought misguidance for or against guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse, مَثَلَهُمْ كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْكَدَ النَّارِ فَلَمَّا أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبُ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلَمَاتٍ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ ثُمَّ بُكْمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ That the muscle, the similitude of these people is as if that a light was shown to them. Okay? Light was lit, fire was lit, and they could see light all over them. Allah is saying this in the Quran. They could see light all over them. Okay? When the fire was lit. Okay? And their surrounding مَا حَوْلَهُ ذَهَبُ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ Okay? And they أَضَاءَتْ مَا حَوْلَهُ Their surroundings became enlightened. They could see light everywhere. Then ذَهَبُ اللَّهُ بِنُورِهِمْ And then the noor was taken away from them. وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ذُلَمَّاتِ اللَّهِ يُبْسِرُونَ And they were left in darkness. And they couldn't see nothing. This, according to some of the opinions documented by Ibn Kathir, 
refers to those people who accepted the light. Light was lit. They accepted Islam. Okay? And then this light was taken away from them because they themselves disbelieved. They themselves disbelieved and their similitude was as if they were standing left standing in darkness. Okay? So light, fire was lit for them. They could see what's around them. They could see the signs of Allah. Here what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means is Adat ma hawlahu. Ma, uh, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this term Allah means that they could see what's around them. They could see the signs of Allah. Allah's signs were declared for them. They were open for them. And they could see clearly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about and how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And they were convinced about Allah. You see, Adat ma hawlahu means that they were actually shown everything openly. Okay? Their surroundings became enlightened. Okay? But then having known all of that, having seen the signs of Allah, having seen the truth of Islam, they chose darkness because of the desires, because of the evil uh, desires which they worship. Okay? So the nur of Allah was taken away from them. The nur of Allah here, what, what does it mean? Islam, deen, hidayah. Okay? Hudan which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the nur was taken away. And now they were left in darkness as it's now. They're standing, looking around in a state of trauma and shock, looking at darkness and they cannot see anything in darkness. This is spiritual darkness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. These verses are not literal. These verses have a very deep meaning. The deep meaning is that when people are shown the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they accept Allah, they know Allah exists, and then they deliberately reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing Allah. These are the people who, have, who are suffering from a spiritual darkness. And that's why they, have a, they never have peace. They are deaf, dumb and blind. They are deaf, dumb and blind. You know why? Why? Literally? Are they deaf, dumb and blind literally? Sorry? To the signs of Allah. They are deaf, dumb and blind. They cannot see anything. They are رَأَيْتُهُمْ يَنْذُرُونَ إِلَيْكَ تَدُورُ عَيْنِهِمْ كَالَّذِي يَخْشَى عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ And they look at the Prophet ﷺ or they look at the people as if they are going to die. You know when someone is dying and they turn their, uh, their eyes here and there. Okay? And in that state of trauma, they're looking at darkness like this and they're in a state of shock. Okay, but they chose this darkness. Okay, and they are deaf, dumb, and blind. Deaf in the sense that when they hear the signs of Allah, when someone comes to them and tells them about Islam, that people hear this, look at this, all these signs of Allah. They hear and they don't pay any attention. They're deaf, dumb, they can't talk anything good, and blind when they see something, they don't see it. Sun, the sun is one of the biggest signs. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the newspaper, okay? <laughs> In case you make mistakes. It's one of the biggest tools of shaitan, the newspaper, okay? It's one of the biggest tools of shaitan. And how ironic, they should call it darkness. <laughs> the darkness, they should change the name of this newspaper to the darkness, not the sun. The sun, Allah has put there for us to see as a sign of Allah. Where does the energy come from? Look at this. Where... Does the energy come from? Where has the energy come from for millions of years for the sun to be there? For thousands of years. And the amount of heat and radiation and light which reaches us is exactly right for our existence. Okay? It's a sign of Allah. Well calculated everything in this universe for our existence in our planet. So these people are deaf, dumb and blind to the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have abandoned Islam. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them in the next word. Oh kathayyabim, oh kathayyabim minas samai fihi zulumatun wa ra'dun wa bark. Yaj'aluna asabi'ahum fi adhanihim min minas sawaiki hadar al maut. Wallahu muhitum bil kafirin. That these people. When they see, when then the darkness, the light, the thunder comes and they put their fingers in their ears because of fear. 
because of the fear. The munafiqun, we are still talking about the hypocrites. They put their fingers in the ears because of the fear of Allah, because of the thunder, the light. Okay? يَكَادُ الْبَرْقُ يَخْطَفُ أَبْسَارَهُمْ كُلَّمَا أَضَاءَ لَهُمْ مَشَّاوُ فِيهِ وَإِذَا أَظْلَمَ عَلَيْهِمْ قَامُوا وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا ذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْسَارِهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ So it is possible for Allah to take the sight away from them by showing them this light. When the lightning comes, what happens if you look at the lightning? You know the thunder and the, and the lightning. Okay? These people are in darkness. Okay? And then a thunder comes like a lightning of guidance, guidance for them. And they see it. They see it. But because their hearts are full of disease, they put their fingers in their ears. They don't want to hear it. Okay, and they can see when the thunder comes in the light, they can see what's around them. What's around them, they can see. Allah made it clear for them. And then the light goes away, then they stop. And don't move. They stop and don't move and don't do nothing. And they stop, they're standing in a state of trauma and shock as to what happened to them. They are shocked because they were given that guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how Ibn Kathir rahmahullah giving different opinions from different Mufassirun such as Ibn Abbas and Abdullah bin Masood and Mujahid and Ata having discussed all of these opinions Ibn Kathir rahmahullah he talks about that these people are those who were given guidance at one time. Who were given guidance at one time and then they refused to accept this guidance. But other opinions they state that these people were given guidance um, at one time and take another, another opinion says they were never guided in the first place. So there were two opinions on, on, on the meaning of this particular verse. But Ibn Kathir Rahmullah, he states the correct opinion is that these people are the ones who were given guidance, who came to Islam, who accepted the Shahada. But then, and it was like a lightning for them. You know, a lightning came, a thunder came, they saw the light, they saw what's around them, they saw the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it went away from them, just like a lightning. Why? Because these people were a people of desires. Okay? They had desires and they didn't have a will to follow Islam. They didn't have a will to be pure. They didn't have a will to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that reason, now it was taken away from them. And now they are in a state of depression. In darkness. So when the lightning goes away, they stop. They don't do nothing. And they're depressed in a state of shock and trauma. And it was possible for Allah to take the sight away from them by this lightning. It was possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that these people are a people who deliberately reject the truth and because of that they face depression in their life. It's a beautiful point. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that people who are munafiks will never have a peaceful life. They will never have peace of mind and heart. They will always suffer from depression. Because they know they are hypocrites. Because they know they are hypocrites. And they don't have a purpose in life. Because what, what are they doing? They are serving their shayateen. They are worshipping their desires. And they know that what they're doing is wrong. They know the truth. And deliberately they reject the truth. And go towards kufr and dalal. And for that reason, they know that they are When you do something wrong, what happens to you? Can anyone help me? You get something here, unless you uh, have a, a, a nafsun ammara. Nafsun ammara is, you know, there are different kind of souls. On Ammar they describe different kind of souls for believers. Okay, there is a soul, nafsun mutmainna, a tranquil soul, a soul which is content with Allah, which is a happy soul. Okay, you don't have nothing in your house. You don't know what you're going to eat tonight. Okay? But you're, you are content. You pray your salah every day. You're a believer. You have iman. You don't care what happens to you. So you see, a believer is not scared of anyone. He's content or she is content. So a believer worships Allah. And through that worship, this believer attains peace. Peace of heart. Not only physical peace. Peace of heart. Spiritual peace. And the soul of this believer becomes content. Nafsun mutma'inna. This is a tranquil soul, a peaceful soul. Okay? Then we have Nafsun lawama. Nafsun lawama is a guilty soul. A guilty soul. A soul, when it does something wrong, it feels guilty. There's something in the heart. 
where it's something, you know when you do something wrong, when you commit a sin, when you backbite someone, when you steal, Allah forbid, or something like that, you know, you feel something in your heart. That's nafsun lawama. Then there is nafsun ammara, a dark soul. Nothing affects this soul. This is a dead heart. This is a dead heart, a dark heart. The Rasul, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stated that every time a person sins, a black dot is put on the heart. Not literally, this is talking spiritually. A black dot is put on the heart of that person. And when the person continues sinning and not repents, doesn't repent, continues sinning, that heart becomes dark all the way, all together. So these little dots added all together, okay, turns into a dark black heart. Okay, not literally, not in the literal sense, in a spiritual sense. That heart dies. No more guilt. No more sense of guilt. Okay, no more sense of fear of Allah. And that's it. The sinning has made your heart so dark that you cannot, they cannot see the truth anymore. And Ibn Qayyim al rahmullah, commenting on this very aspect of human life states that the, the, one of the biggest signs of a dead heart is when the truth is presented to it, it rejects it. So the dead heart is when you show this dead heart a sign of Allah, call this dead heart towards Allah, this dead heart it re rejects the truth. I don't want to know. Kibar, dalal, haughtiness, whatever, desires, something comes in the way. Okay? And this is a dead heart. So these people, munafiqun, they have these dead, dark hearts. Nothing affects them. Summun bukmun amyun fahum la yarji'un. Okay, disbelievers. The munafiks are disbelievers, right? Allah says that about the kuffar. And these are disbelievers. But munafiks are also disbelievers. So that verse also applies to munafiks. And munafiks, they have another, another bonus. Okay, that bonus is summun bukmun amyun fahum la yarjihum. Their hearts are sealed. They don't accept nothing. Their eyesight, the hearing, and their talking capacity is sealed. They're no good. And these people are the people of depression because of their darkness, because of the kind of life they live. You know, they will see all, all them, these, these people who smoke and drink and do all these things, you know. What is so attractive about smoking and drinking and living a sinful life? What's so attractive about that? It's a sign of depression. It's a sign of depression. When people, people sin, their depression increases. And who do you think are the people who commit most suicides? Where are the most suicides committed? Where? Celebrities. Sorry? Celebrities, showbiz. Celebrities, showbiz, clubbers. people, clubbers, you know. What happens to these people? They commit suicides. How many examples do we know of people committing suicide, trying to kill themselves out of depression? Too many. Too many people because of hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Rejecting the truth and pretending to be a person of truth. So these showbiz people, who are they? They are sinful people, they live sinful lives, okay? And what happens? They pretend to be good. They pretend to be good. I want to do this, I want to take part in this good, good cause. Madonna goes to Malawi, she opens schools up, okay? She has caused so much destruction in the world because of her songs and because of the lifestyle she promoted. Drinking and dancing and singing all of that. Okay? Yes? She has done that. Now she wants to go and do something good for mankind. She's a hypocrite. She's a hypocrite. Stop doing what you did in the past. Repent from it and then do something good and Allah will reward you. But you keep selling your records. Hey Mr. DJ, turn the record on. All of that. You remember that song? I used to love it back in the day okay yeah and Mr. Ali G was part of that in the video yeah these people are a bunch of yateen they are a bunch of hypocrites so they what they do they live a sinful life a life of kufar and dalal open and then they want to go and do something good to look good this is hypocrisy okay if you want to benefit mankind then stand up against oppression and tyranny defend the poor and the oppressed defend the one who is being killed and being starved to death and not clothed. These are the people you need to defend, right? Go, don't go and adopt few children here and there and open schools up. There are people dying of starvation. As I speak, there are people dying in, uh, in, in Syria. Who's talking for them? Who's talking for them? 
Who wants to do anything for them? No one. No one. So these people, they live a depressed life. And they try to please themselves, but they don't get peace. Again, suicide rates in Japan, in Scandinavian states, some of the most prosperous nations on the face of this earth when it comes to material strength. Okay, materialistically, these are some of the most prosperous countries on the face of the earth. Japan and Scandinavian states. Highest suicide rate. Why? Teenagers, youngsters, they've had their cocaine, they have, they've had their sex and drugs and rock and roll, and now what do they have in front of them? Atheism. Die, I might, I might as well die. What's the point of living? What's the point of living? So these people, they voluntarily take their lives. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now changing the topic altogether. Having talked about the believers, the disbelievers, and the hypocrites and their qualities, who these people are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to mankind who people are. There are three categories. The believers, you're either believers, or you're either, you, you are disbelievers, or you are hypocrites. You, there, there's no third category. There's nothing else. Mankind is divided into three categories by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believers, disbelievers, or hypocrites. Having done that, having <coughs> explained, described who people are and how to recognize them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes further. Ya ayyuhan nasu u'budu rabbakum walladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. O people, now having known these categories, having discussed all of these things, O oh people, generally, mankind, all of you, worship Allah, your Rabb, your Lord. Worship Allah, Alladhi khalaqakum, who created you, who created you. Every single word, Wallahi, in this surah, in this particular verse, is a gem. Is a gem. Who created you? Walladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. And those who came before you. He created you and those who came before you so that you should fear Allah. Alladhi ja'ala lakum al-arda firasha wa samaa bina'a. Who made this earth a bed for you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this earth a bed for you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazingly changing, uh, changes the topic and now he talks about his power. Why should you worship Allah? This is a very, very important point in this particular verse, brothers and sisters. O oh people, worship Allah, who is your Lord, who created you and those before you. Okay? And so that you fear Allah. And why should he be worshipped? He goes on to talk about his power and his strength and what he has done. He made this earth a bed for you. He made the sky a covering for you. وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً And from the skies He sent down water for your existence. Imagine if it didn't rain, brothers and sisters. Why do people die? Why do famines happen? Famines happen because it stops to rain. So imagine if Allah withholds the rain, we will all cease to exist. We will all die. So Allah is telling you how Allah created you and how He sustained your existence. Is that clear, brothers and sisters? How He created you and those who came before you and how He sustained your existence. وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَانْ وَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ And from this rain came fruits. When the rain falls on earth, then you have your harvests, fruits, you eat. رِزْقًا لَكُمْ فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا And from this fruit, comes risk, your provisions, your food. For this reason, for this reason, do not ascribe partners with him. Do not share partnership. Do not have other gods beside him. Because he's the one who did it. He's the one who created you. Those who before you came, your ancestors. Then he gave you earth as a bed, sky as a covering. Okay, and then rain came down. From rain came your food. And because of that food, you exist. Because of that food, you exist. So worship Him, the one who did this. Not others who don't deserve to be worshipped because they haven't done nothing for you. Don't worship Hanuman, Ganesh, Jesus Christ, or people who claim to be God or people who didn't claim to be gods, for example. Don't worship these people. The question is, what have they done for you? The Christian may argue that Jesus died for our sins. 
That's why we worship him. But that doesn't make him God. That doesn't make him God. My question is, who made Jesus? Jesus himself said that he was made by someone, right? Jesus himself said there is someone greater than him. Father is greater than I. So how can Jesus be God and he can have a greater God than himself? I ascend on to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. So how can a God has, uh, have a God? This is the question I pose. So, وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a very profound point here in the end of this very verse. And I will end with this verse to resume inshallah ta'ala next week. So we finish with the 22nd verse today. That do not ascribe, partner, ascribe partners with Allah when you know. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ When you know for sure what you're doing is wrong. You know Allah is the one who created you. He's the one who gave you all the provisions and He's the one who sustained your existence. Do not ascribe partners with Him. This is the biggest zulm. In the shirk, in the shirk, in the shirk, shirk, polytheism, ascribing partners with Allah is the biggest oppression. Biggest injustice. Biggest injustice. Because He's the one who created you. He's the one who gave you everything. And you leave Him and go to others to worship them. Is that fair? وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ You know it. You know it. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Brothers and sisters, thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions, please put them forward. We will try our best to answer them as soon as possible. And if there are any questions on the net, on the net please put them forward. Are there any questions? There's one question from a brother named Sharik. He asks, Allah SWT says that munafiks are like those who are deaf, dumb and blind. One understands that they reject to see and hear the truth. But how does it explain them being unable to speak? Where does that fit in? Okay, amazingly, this is another miracle uh, of the Quran, okay? When you don't hear, when you, you see the children who are uh, deaf and dumb, you know, some children you see who don't have the capacity to speak, although they have the power, the strength, they have the, you know, um, the, the necessary qualities to speak, they have a tongue, they have the strength to speak, but they cannot speak because they cannot hear. They cannot hear. Is that clear? So all these kids, when they grow up, from the age of two and three, they start talking. You know why? Because their parents are communicating with them. And they listen to their parents, they hear their parents, and they copy their parents, having heard their parents. So when you copy them, you start to talk. And you start to talk like your parents. But if you don't want to hear, you will never talk. So these hypocrites... They are first deaf and then dumb. They are dumb because they're deaf. They don't hear the truth. They don't follow it. They don't swallow it. They don't accept it. Their hearts are dark, black. They are sealed. They don't want to hear. So because they don't hear, not that literally they don't hear, they do hear, but they don't accept it. It doesn't penetrate their heart, the truth. That's why because the truth doesn't penetrate their heart, the truth doesn't come on the tongue. They will always lie. They will always lie. So in that sense, they are deaf, dumb, and blind. And they can't see the truth. I hope that answers your question, brother, inshallah. The next question is from a, uh, from a sister named Shapur. She goes, what are the main characteristics of a monophic? For instance, sometimes you do something khair, and then shaitan comes to you and tells you that you are showing off or you have done it for so and so's sake. So you start to feel guilty and think you are a monophic. Well, this, mashallah, is a good question. The sister asked a question from uh, somewhere on the net that what are the signs of a monafik? Because sometimes you do good deeds and you think that uh, you're doing these deeds to show off and the shaitan comes to you and makes you think that you're a monafik. This, in fact, sister, is a positive thing. This is a sign of Iman. This is what Umar had. This is what Abu Bakr had. This is what some of the companions of the Messenger of Allah had. This guilt. Okay, this fear of uh, being uh, held accountable for the thoughts. So some of the Sahaba, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Ya Rasulullah, we are finished, we are destroyed. Why? What have you done? Ya Rasulullah, we get these thoughts, doubtful thoughts. We think that we are not sincere. And the Messenger of Allah, he tells them that this is a sign of Iman. This is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. If you don't get those thoughts, if you think you're doing everything right, I am... Mr. Perfect or Miss Perfect, I am the Superman or a Superwoman, then there is something wrong. This is, this is a dangerous state of mind. If you don't get these thoughts, but when you get these thoughts, 
This is a sign of Iman. Wush the shaitan away. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Purify your intentions and carry on with the job you're doing. So don't be put off by shaitan when you're doing something good. When you're doing a good job. Shaitan is there to make things difficult for you. So when you're about to do something good, shaitan comes to do, comes to you, don't do it. Because you're not doing it for the sake of Allah. Don't do it. What you do is, you definitely do it. And you leave the, uh, the reward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because shaitan wants you to not do it. By making you think like this. Okay? Shaitan works in very complicated ways. He's been around for a long time. And so have his, uh, his followers and his entourage. I hope that answers your question, sister, inshallah. The final question is from Sister Paul Washa. Mm. She says, Assalamu alaikum. Would you please explain, uh, can believers be sad? Is it a sign of hypocrisy if we are sad or depressed? Okay. The believers can be sad. And this sad can only be dealt with. There's a sister asked this question, can the believers be sad? And if uh, they are sad, is this a sign of hypocrisy? Okay, no. Huzn, Huzn is, uh, can be, you know, uh, a part of a believer's life. For example, even Rasulullah when his wife passed away, when his uncle passed away, he was sad. This sadness not, is not because of his Iman, okay? The reason why Munafiks are sad because their hearts are dark. They know they are dark inside and they know their intentions are bad. They know they are evil people. That's why they're sad. Okay? A believer is sad when something wrong happens to the Muslims, for example. What we see in Syria today, what is happening in Syria, saddens us all. It saddens me. It saddens all those brothers and sisters who are out there trying to do something. Okay? So if it, if it saddens you, then it's a sign of Iman. So sadness sometimes is a sign of Iman. For example, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he said that um, believers are like one body. This Ummah is like one body. Kajasadin wahid, like one body. And if one part of the body is hurt, the entire body is in pain. So that pain is a sign of Iman. Okay? If you're not in pain, then you have, there's something wrong with you. Depression is something different. Depression is not from Iman. A mu'min, a believer can never be depressed. Can be sad, but can never be depressed. Because depression is due to lack of Iman, uh, because you're feeling down, maybe you're a, a sinner, you sin excessively, maybe that's why one is depressed. And to get rid of depression, you need to go back to the Quran, read the Quran, do dhikr, read two rakat, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove your depression sincerely. You see what happens within five minutes, inshallah. You will see the depression go away. Turn to Allah. Immediately your situation will change. Turn to Allah and look at Allah and say, Ya Allah, you are the greatest and I am the lowest. And I accept your majesty, your glory, and your power, and I submit to you. See what happens. You'll never be depressed. Inshallah ta'ala. Anyone else? Any questions for Brother Sister Sai? No? Khalas. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadun la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, see you next week.